Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Sugar Rush Signature Man, checking in with 343X Chris. Already a win under their belt last year. You might remember them, division finalists as well, too, and looking phenomenal here. Can't wait to talk about a lot of great things. Uh, we're going to be highlighting a couple main parts of their robot from the mechanical side, but there is so much from programming that we're going to be going into on this robot. A lot of cool feedback on the controller, uh, something called a brain screen, which we'll be talking about as well, too. So let's learn more about this team coming up here on Fits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Nathan, let's start off on your robot. I uh, you got an uh, uh, intake that you've done a couple iterations for in that rebuild. And then uh, also a double hang. Love to hear more about too. Talk to me more about it. Yeah, so our intake, it see, it starts up like this so we can stay in size. And then when it spins, it just drops. And how we did that is that there's a little stanchion here inside attached to one of our bearing blocks. And the, uh, the, the, the rubber band just hangs on that. And when it comes off, it just falls down. Works every time, helps us keep in size, you know, just really nice to have. Um, transitioning to this, our hang, so our first type of hang we developed was based off the ace hang, which is a passive hang where we have this hump here, and this it just this is over the bar and it um, it hangs. It's an eight or hang, um, but it works well, it's really smooth. They can attach to that. Um, yeah. Our other hang is this park hang right here. Um, we went through a lot of iterations of this. Originally we just had this bar, uh, but we found that row would just tip back and it really didn't really work. We could get it like once in every ten um, and it would it would work, but it was just too hard to drive. So then we added the stanchion to try to get it to work better, and it still didn't work. And then we added eventually this bar, which is like the key to the mechanism. And what it does is that, here, put it up. When this is here, it locks on the edge of the bar. So we can basically tip back instead of tipping forward, which does this park hang really well. You mentioned you took inspiration from uh, 229B uh, on their bot as well. Are there any other teams, uh, when you were looking at making modifications, that you maybe considered but didn't quite go with on your bot? Yeah, uh, so originally we had a four bar, and so we, uh, we saw a raised four bar team. And we made the four bar, but it didn't really work too well. And so we decided just to kind of scrap it and go with the two bar. And then uh, from your intake on it, one of the things I love uh, with teams, I think it's super underrated, are really wide intakes on robots yeah. as well too. Uh, why was this design uh, important to you? And in regards to it working out, uh, how has it worked out on the field so far? Yeah, so we, we actually had a wider intake before. Oh, wow. um, it, we stayed outside of the drivetrain, but it wasn't supported enough. So we actually shrunk it down a little bit, and that just helped with stability. A lot of teams have problems with like their intake swaying, but ours is actually pretty stable from left to right. Um, and the other thing that really helped our intake was this rubber band right here. And what it did is it basically lifts up the tri ball uh, when it goes in, and it's kind of flexible, so the tri ball can kind of go wherever, and it works anytime. Baker, when I was talking to other teams and they were messaging me about your team, they kept saying you got to ask them about their programming, what they've been doing for that. It's really cool. Uh, so you got a couple awesome things we're going to be showing off. I'm just going to let you roll right into it. Talk to me more about it uh, and why it's uh, really standing out. Um, all right, so there's a couple reasons people might say that. Um, and I think the biggest problem, the biggest reason probably is this brain screen right here. So we have a really, really nice auto selector. It's kind of something I just kind of cooked up for fun. Uh, when I had the brain and not the bot as a programmer, that's all I can do, right? And so we have a bunch of different autons here uh, that display, and so we can confirm. And then it displays a fun little GIF, you know, Minecraft parkour, whatever you, whatever you want, basically, uh, just for fun. It's really funny to hear uh, some of the other teams, like, you know, we'll be driving around, and then they'll be like, wait, they have Minecraft on their brain. How did that happen? <laughs> so, part of the strategy, uh, right? So Yeah, part yeah. of the strategy, actually, distraction. Um, anyway, something that's actually useful uh, is on the controller screen right here, you can see we have the average temperature of the drivetrain. So this tells us before every single match, you know, maybe we need to hot swap the motors, maybe one of the motors is unplugged, and the way we do that is by if a motor comes unplugged, like this flywheel right here, it'll say on the controller screen, and the, I don't know if you can hear that, but the controller is buzzing, and so we know whenever a motor gets unplugged, we'll see it on the controller screen, we'll know, and once we plug it back in, do that, goes back to the average temperature, we're good to go, ready to start the match. Um, yeah, that's about it. For when, when other teams are looking at like implementing different types of feedback and stuff like that, do you have any advice for teams on either why it's important or maybe if they want to get started for the first time on what they could do? I think a lot of it is learned through experience, right? Sure. Like, you know, we, I think last year, some we had some matches where we, had, we were a catapult last year and our catapult just got unplugged and, you know, maybe the wire, the port came, the port came out or the port is dead or the wire is dead. And so it's really nice to have this feedback uh, on the controller to know, like, okay, all the motors are good. We're good to go, 100%. Um, and, you know, maybe that part of that's our fault, that some of the motors got unplugged. But 
uh, hey, sometimes the best teacher, the though, too, right? Besides so, the point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so there's some just like redundancy things that we have to help us succeed, right? Make sure we're going into every match with our best foot forward. Uh, in terms of like the actual autonomous routines, we just uh, we used to use Pure Pursuit, which I think I probably sent a video in yeah. one of the discords later, where our bot was kind of like drifting around and stuff. Um, we found that without tracking, we used that without tracking wheels, and basically we just assumed that the horizontal spread was zero, and we used one side of the drivetrain as a pseudo tracking wheel uh, in order to get uh, an X and Y coordinate position of the bot at all times. But we found that you know. IME Autumn, which is basically like the motor encoders. IME Autumn kind of drifts, the IME slip. Uh, sometimes the bot thinks it's somewhere else than where it really is, and so you kind of got to adapt to that. So now we're kind of just using the normal PID. But I do think I've added a little bit of special sauce to it. All right. So I think it's a, I think it's a little bit better than the average PID, but uh, yeah. Well, well, the last bye. thing I'm going to ask as we wrap up on here, uh, there are a lot of uh, very creative names here at Sugar Rush. Uh, your name is Chris for your team, uh, how did you come up with such a uh, robust name that you have? So I started um, I started Vex and Tipping Point. My first competition was Tipping Point Worlds, basically. And um, going into spin-up, the seniors told us, if you ch the, the three for the X name is Chris, if you change it, we're not gonna like you. Right. Now, that might not be exactly what they said. All right, but paraphrasing. Paraphrasing, editing a little bit, but that's basically what they said. They're not gonna like us if we change the name, so we didn't change the name. And it kind of stuck, and now we're kind of known as Chris. So and it's working out well it. for you. Well, three four three X. First off, congratulations on a great season so far. I can't wait to see how you do here at Sugar Rush. And an awesome explanation of your robot. Can't wait to see more of them. So good luck at this event, and we can't wait to see the rest of the future. Thanks a lot. Thank this video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you, and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.